We're in the TechCrunch studio today with Josh Buckley, founder and CEO of Minor Monsters. Josh, welcome to the studio. It's a pleasure. Thank you for having me. So, Josh, you're a 19-year-old founder of a company. 20. 20 year old, excuse me, founder of a VC backed company. Correct. Went through Y Combinator, came over from uh, England to the United States, and have an iPhone gaming company, Minor Monsters. How did you get from A to B? Yeah, um, so I'm originally from Kent, England, and I've been building products for the web for the past um, decade almost. So when I was 11 or 12, um, my parents got a computer in the house and I started um, freelancing, so I was building projects for clients, and they didn't know I was a t 11 or 12 year old at the time. But um, that's the beauty of kind of building things on the web. Like, there's no meritocracy. Like, you can build something, and you have no idea who's behind it. Yeah. And how did you start? You know, first learning. Yeah. The, um, learning those skills, and then how did you market those skills? So early on, I um, I guess I was the kid who spent a lot of time indoors and kind of hacking away on the computer, playing games, and um, I decided to teach myself programming. It was just um, something I was interested in. So I taught myself HTML, PHP, etc. And the first thing I did was I realized it's easy to make thousands of dollars freelancing for clients. And by the time I was like 13, 14, I, um, I got bored of freelancing for other people, like working for other people. So that, that was the end of that stage. And I, um, I started to kind of use it as my own creative output by building my own websites. And, I guess I had some early success there by building some things which um, people wanted to buy off me somehow, which was kind of foreign and crazy. To so, me. so, so you're in Kent. You're an hour outside London. You're going to school during the day, and then you're rushing home, and start hacking and working on these projects. Yeah, yeah. So um, I was rushing home. My parents just thought I was playing games on the computers, um, and I guess I was just I was hacking in the evenings and. Um, then some evenings I'd rush off to London to kind of go to these industry events and get home at 1 a.m., get up at 7 for school the next day. It was, it was really exciting back in Kent. Um, and your parents were cool with you being a teenager and going out to London every night? And um, so this was the stage when I was like 15. I think I had to yeah. kind of um, prove to them after a while that I was... I, I took a few years to kind of exert my independence, but I slowly proved to them that I was able to kind of um, do this myself. And so what were you doing in London when you went there? Yeah, um, so I went to kind of industry events, um, meetups, and I met a bunch of kind of CEOs and just really interesting people in London. Um, they had a very young tech scene at the time, but um, I kind of met people, and um, some of those people have now invested in my current company, Minor Monsters. And really, I look back at that time and connect the dots, and just um, that was a great early time in my development. And so as you were going on, I mean, did you have any early successes of sites or products that you built? Yeah, so um, when, I was, when I was 12 or 13, I built a website teaching people PHP programming. So I knew the language for maybe three months. Then I built a website where I wrote tutorials myself. And I sold it for maybe $2,000. So my parents were shocked. They were like, where did you get this money, Josh? Like, they were, they were a bit, um, they thought it was a bit dodgy, I guess. Yeah. And then it got really interesting when I was 15. So... I had wanted to kind of get my creative output, and I built a game. So it was a virtual world kind of game online called Minutia, um, and it took off. It was growing super fast. Um, I was 15 at the time, and I was back in high school. And it got to a point where I was in the middle of my GCSE exams, which are kind of like the SATs, I guess, over in, um, in America. And it was just so stressful. I had a team of like 15 people, um, and everyone was just, I was just so stressed out. I was in the middle of exams. So um, somehow, by just chance, right at this time, um, things were still growing, but I was just tearing my hair out as a 15-year-old. Um, a company in Texas offers to buy this off my hands, and um, we talk on the phone for maybe 48 hours, ironing out the terms, negotiating. Mm -hmm. And um, I managed to sell the company when I was um, 15. Um, the funny thing is, my parents didn't even know I was running this website at the time. So <laughs> yeah, it was really interesting. Um, I walked downstairs at like 11 PM at night. Um, the first thing my dad asks, they were watching TV downstairs, um, uh, and the first thing my dad asks is like, why are you still awake on an exam night? You have exams in the morning. Um, I didn't really know what to say, so I just um, had the contract in my hand and I just passed it to them, and um, they were pretty shocked, I guess. Um, mm -hmm. Then he just shook my hand, and we didn't really say much after that. I just um, I walked back upstairs, went to bed, because I had exams the next day, but um, yeah. I sat at the top of the stairs, and uh, they were pretty proud, so it, it felt good. And so at that time, did you know, like, did you, did your parents expect you to go to college or did you think you were going to go to college? You know, um, obviously now you're here and you didn't go. Yeah. So 
I never had an intention of going to college. It just um, never felt like it was part of my path. Um, and did you have any pressure? Yeah. So I, t I remember the time when I told my parents um, that I wasn't going to go to college. Like, there's a time in England where you have to apply to college, um, or university as we call it there. And um, I just told them, but they didn't really believe it, I guess. Um, <laughs> so that actually made me apply, which is fine, because there was no reason not to apply. Mm. So I did apply, and I actually got some great offers and places. Um, and then I, I just told them, even though I got these offers, I'm not going. Um, I'm sorry, but I just know what I want to do. Um, so I, they kind of, I needed to prove to them that I was able to do it. So they, I agreed with them that I'd take a year out, prove to them that I can like, live without college. I can, I can be a success on my own. I can be a functioning adult. And um, from there, I applied to Y Combinator. I see. Yeah. And how did you hear about Y Combinator? So. After I sold my company um, back in 2007, I had a bunch of money on my hands as a 15-year-old. And basically, I sat on it for like six months. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't want to blow all this money. And after six months, my dad was really proud of me. He was like, Josh, you haven't spent this money. How? So they started taking me house hunting and things, um, like looking for ways to invest this money um, in an intelligent way. However, that just wasn't a, something I wanted to do. So after about six months, I flipped and I decided um, I'm not going to, well, I'm not going to sit on this money as a 15 year old. It makes no sense. So I started doing two things. Um, I started traveling a lot. So I went to like Thailand, Miami, all these places over weekends. And I just met a ton of industry people. And it was r a really inspiring time where I learned about the industry. I learned about myself and I really became really independent. I was maybe 16 at the time. Mm -hmm. And then the other interesting thing I did, the second thing was I started investing some of the money in wow. friends ideas. Wow. Yeah, so um, it sounds exciting, <laughs> but it was, um, it was really stupid. In fact, I, I probably made about seven investments, and these were just friends um, I knew from forums just so online. So you were paying it forward? Well, I guess I, was just, <laughs> I was wanted to be involved. I, I had no, nothing creative going on, and I was trying to find my next project. And I, see. I wanted to be involved in all these ideas. Um, now, most of the, I blew a ton of money doing this, but mm. one of these ideas was my friend John, um, who was the founder of Daily Booth. Now, Daily Booth went on to raise um, $7 million. And um, I put up the money when John was um, in his mum's closet with the idea. Um, and basically, I, I put in the initial money there. And then I saw Daily Booth go through Y Combinator. Um, and I just followed their path through there. And that's where I kind of learned about Silicon Valley and just um, the whole Y Combinator experience. And so would, like, having gone through Y Combinator, is it something you recommend to people who contact you, you know, who, are, who are maybe in high school or even before high school who are kind of going on this path? Do you think it's for everyone, or do you think it was something you saw you know, sneak peek into because of your friend? Um, absolutely. So I think it's, um, Y Combinator is definitely an amazing program. I think uh, you've got to be a, in a certain point of your life because it, um, it can be intense. Like it was a, it was a three month period of my life when it was described as boot camp. I mean, I was there, I was eating ramen noodles for three months. So I was like skinny as a skeleton and um, it was really intense. But I think there were two major benefits to being there. Like the first was this um, kind of three month structure where you're just 100% focused on your startup and you're surrounded by some of the most amazing people in the industry like Paul Graham, um, all these amazing investors and just all the startups around you. Is, it's kind of an environment that's really conducive to building a successful startup. Um, then the second thing is just the network. Like it gave me access to everyone in Silicon Valley. I mean, we raised money from this roster of amazing investors and VCs and I don't think I would have been able to do that nearly as quickly without um, Paul Graham and just everyone in Y Combinator. Right. And so now, you know, I'm, I'm imagining that you probably get a lot of emails and other types of communication of kids. Maybe, maybe they're 10 years old. Maybe they're just starting, you know, becoming teenagers. You know, what are the questions you hear from them, right? Because you've obviously, you know, you're only 20, but you've got 10 years of web experience, right? And sort of made it here and you're on a path and long way to go. But what are the questions you're hearing from people who are following you? And, you know, what would you want to share with them? Yeah, I think um, a lot of people just want general advice on how to, how to get where they want to be and how to follow, get out in Silicon Valley and how to follow their career here, whether it's get invested from Y Combinator, get investment and build a great product. And I think um, I generally talk to people um, maybe over the phone or very briefly, but I think um, it's great that people go out and ask me because that shows that they're taking the initiative. I think some really important things that I generally give as um, basic advice that kind of I've just led my time here are um, 
One, surround yourself with brilliant people. So um, I've done that in my current startup. Like everyone in Minor Monsters are people I learn sure. so much from. But I mean, what did you do before that? Was it that, I mean, wh what do you think are the decisions you made that other people could kind of say, okay, so it sounds like when you were in high school, you were commuting two hours a day to London every night to meet people, right? right. Was it those types of things that you were doing? Yeah, so I think that relates back. I think um, I went to London every night because I was surrounding myself with these amazing people in London who were way ahead of me in their careers. And I think um, they respected me because I was coming up and I was just um, exhausted doing it. But I was so passionate about what I was doing. And this isn't for everyone, but um, sure. if you really follow your passions and just keep creating, I think that's another thing I was like from the age of 10 or 11 or 12, um, I was just always building something new. I think that's really important. Like the early stuff I created was awful, but um, I yeah. just didn't stop. I think yeah. um, that's really important. And so it's, it's something like the lesson there for you is just like keep creating and you may hit it on the 11th time or the 100th time. Yeah, and I think you just, um, you have to be doing it for the right reasons as well. Um, like I, it's not about the money. It's, um, for me, it's about creative expression, and it's about doing what I really love. And um, like, I walk into the office every day, and I'm super passionate about it. And if you're doing it for the money, um, you're not going to make it past this um, like five, ten year mark where it really takes um, it takes the persistence. Got it. Well, thanks for coming into the studio, and good luck to you and Minimonsters. Thank you very much. Thanks, Josh.